Hello, uh, my name is Gustavo Guerrero Quintero, and uh, I'm here a teacher at James Madison Elementary. I currently teach sixth grade. Uh, I got my bachelor's in science at Washington State University, and I also got my master's in teaching at Washington State University. Um, I'm currently uh, working on my multiple subject credential. Uh, some background information on myself. I was born here in Fresno, California, but I've also lived in Mexico uh, and in Washington State. Um, I was able to do a couple of years of high school in Mexico as well as in Washington. I've been teaching for two years now. Um, I began my teaching career at, in Sanger at Washington Academic Middle School, where I only taught two subjects, which was math and science. Um, but now I'm lucky enough to be teaching here at Madison Elementary in Madera. Um, I did my student teaching at Jefferson Elementary in Pullman, Washington, and my master teacher was Sandra Casanova, um, and that was a fifth grade classroom. Uh, this is my year two of MIC participation, um, and I'm focusing on two California state standards. Uh, the first one is engaging and supporting all students in learning, and the second one is creating and maintaining an effective environment uh, for student learning. Um, and I am set to complete my MIC uh, here spring of 2020. So before the school year began, I was able to collaborate and talk uh, with my administration here, as well as uh, the fifth grade teachers and my sixth grade team. And I was able to come to the conclusion that my students struggled heavily uh, in math as well as in reading. Um, they had very little knowledge of how to develop uh, I had very little knowledge of how to develop my use of a variety of instruction strategies, resources, and um, different ways of teaching and using technology in the classroom. Um, but I am still working on these and refining these skills in order to enhance and improve my teaching in the classroom and outside of the classroom in order to meet uh, the, the diverse um, learning needs of my students, not only uh, English-only students, but also English learner students. I also had to improve uh, as a teacher on how to create a physical but also a virtual learning environment, especially because of the times that which we are in now. Um, it's extremely important to take the classroom outside of the classroom, but also put it in our students' homes. Uh, so I wanted to improve and uh, refine these skills of creating a virtual learning environment uh, that promoted growth and enhanced my students' learning. Um, and I've now expanded on these abilities and am continuing to refine these skills in order to create a physical and virtual classroom environment. So here's my first individual learning plan, or ILP goal number one. Uh, this focused on engaging and supporting all students in learning. Uh, and I focused on 1.4, which is using a variety of instructional strategies, resources, and technologies to meet my students' diverse learning needs. Um, my goal was to develop my use of a variety of instructional strategies, resources, and different methods of teaching uh, in order to meet my students' diverse learning needs. Uh, based on this goal, uh, my students would be able to use a variety of instructional strategies, resources, and technology in order to deepen and strengthen and enhance their mathematical skills. As a result, our goal, or my goal, was that 50% of my students uh, would improve in math, and 50% of students would improve by one performance band uh, or strand in the math and WEA test. Uh, some different pathways that I took in order to reach uh, my goal was that I attended uh, Solutions Tree Professional Learning Community that work in San Jose. This was a conference uh, that I was able to participate in and work with my administration as well as other teachers here at the site where we, have, we were able to collaborate and exchange ideas and knowledge. Um, I was able to grow and talk to different teachers on what they did in the classroom in order to enhance their students' learning. I observed Felipe Magos uh, teach math as well as social studies using technology, which is something that I really wanted to improve on and enhance my skills in, which is creating a virtual learning environment. Um, I attended Kagan Strategies training in order to uh, enhance and incorporate uh, active engagement in the classroom and I also read a course for teaching English learners uh, by Lynn 
uh, Diaz Rico, which helped me gain a lot more knowledge and understanding um, it, on how to teach and help English learners in the classroom and how to create a learning environment inside and outside of the classroom um, that was helpful to them. Uh, implementation of these learning, uh, of the learning based on the pathways was that I created an interactive lesson plans uh, that included hyperlinks to resources uh, that we would use in class. Uh, these were shared with my team as well as the administration here at the school and also the students. Um, I incorporated an interactive math journal into the math lessons in order to increase student engagement. Uh, created anchor charts that were placed around the classroom in order to help students um, with their math skills. I also concluded lessons with exit tickets in order to assess my students' learning um, while also implementing a specific time in class uh, for students to enhance their mathematical skills on Khan Academy, which is something that this, the district really uh, wanted us to implement in our classrooms and also heighten the use of virtual classrooms and learning. So here's an example of the weekly interactive lesson plans that were used and shared with the students as well as the team and administration that included hyperlinks on uh, different presentations, activities, and videos that the students could use inside and outside of the classroom in order to enhance their learning. It included standards, uh, mathematical practices, vocabulary, which was extremely important, the objectives and classroom or resources that they could use in order to improve their mathematical skills. Here's an example of our interactive math journal, uh, which included cutouts, different colors, notes. Uh, this is on coordinate planes and absolute value. As you can see, there's a lot of examples in writing and even artwork in here that, imp that incorporates different areas of teaching in here. Here's an example of the anchor charts that were placed around the classroom in order to help and create this classroom environment. Um, for students that included a lot of the important aspects and skills that they needed to learn in order to be successful in each unit of math and also race um, which helped them and prepared them for the cast later on so our goal was that 50 percent of the students would improve in math and the way that i was able to assess and get this information was by incorporating the interactive journals, cooperative student activities, using quizzes and referencing class anchor charts in order to help my students. Um, and all of these required active student engagement and participation. Based on this, my students would be able to use all of these instructional strategies, resources, and technology in order to deepen and strengthen their mathematical skills. As a result, referencing back to the goal, 50% of my students would improve in math. Um, and in order to obtain these results and all of my data and information, I gave a pre and summative math assessment. Um, I used the NWEA and Illuminate Education to grade these assessments. And my three focus students were Caesar, Sarai, and Genevieve. Caesar was an EL student who was part of the homeless program. Sarai was an EL reclassified student who was part of uh, the Part C migrant program and Genevieve was an advanced student. So here's the information or data on my students at the beginning of the year uh, taken fall uh, of 2019. Uh, this shows that only 8% of my students uh, based on the pre-assessment were proficient um, and this pre-assessment also gives us information on subsets which was operations and algebraic thinking, real and complex numbers, etc. And based on the situation that we're in right now, unfortunately, I was not able to give a post-test. So in my presentation, you'll see that I used each one of these subsets in order to gain information um, on my students' growth throughout the year. This first unit one uh, assessment, it shows that 52.4 of my percent of the class was able to uh, pass the goal, which was 50% of the students improving in math. Um, and all two thirds of my focus students were able to meet the goal. Unit two, which is based on the subset of real and complex numbers, 47.6% um, of the class was able to meet the goal, was able to be proficient. Uh, we did not reach the goal of 50%, but 47.6% of the students grew. And going back to this, 
um, on this second subset, only 13% of the class was proficient, but based on the new information, on the new data and the new and implementing all these new strategies, 47.6% of the class was able to grow and improve in their math skills. And all three of my focus students were able to improve and grow and be proficient. Unit three, 43.5% uh, of the class was able to master this. Um, this subset, only 8% of the students were able to be proficient. Uh, based on this, we did not reach our goal of 50% of the students improving, but we were able to grow um, dramatically from 8% all the way to 43.5%. And all three of my focus students were able to be proficient in this unit. And lastly, unit four, which is based on the fourth subset of the pre-assessment, 29.2% uh, of the whole class were able to master this. Um, two thirds of my focus students were able to master this, but referencing back uh, to the data that was shown in this previous slide, where only 8% of the students were proficient, now we're at 29.2%, which is a very good size growth. Um, based on this subset. So we did not reach our 50% goal of students improving, but we did grow from 8% all the way to nearly 30%, which is 22% growth. And two thirds of the focus students were able to master this. So this is just a table that shows my student, my three focus students growth uh, from fall to winter. Two of my students grew, one remained the same. Uh, so, as a result, um, based on using a variety of instructional strategies, um, resources, and technology in order to deepen and strengthen my students' mathematical skills, the goal was that 50% of my students would improve in math. Um, an average of all four subsets, uh, we got 43.175% of students improved in math um, and strengthened their math mathematical skills. And as the year progressed, all three of my focus students improved and expanded their mathematical skills. Even though we weren't able to reach the 50% of all students improving, 43% of my students grew. And going back to the pre-assessment, 8% of the class was proficient. And now we're at 43.175%. So now going to my ILP goal number two, uh, which was creating and maintaining an effective environment for student learning. Um, I focused on 2.2, which is creating and maintaining a physical or virtual learning environment that promoted student learning, reflected their diversity, and encouraged constructive and productive interactions among themselves and the students in the class. Uh, my goal was to expand my abilities uh, to create physical and virtual learning environments that promoted student learning, reflected diversity, and encouraged constructive and productive interactions among the students in the classroom. Uh, based on this, students would be able to use physical, effective physical and virtual learning environments that were promoted by diversity and encouragement um, with productive interactions. As a result, my goal was that 50% of my students would improve in reading and 50% of my students would improve by one band performance strand on the reading SRI test. Here's some pathways that I took in order to reach this goal. Uh, I attended Fred Jones Tools for Teaching conference, which provided a lot of information on how to create a better physical and virtual environment for a class and for the students. Um, I took cl classes online through the Inter International University. Um, I created class and grade level goals, uh, designated a reading table and set up uh, a specific classroom library. Um, I was able to have my vice principal model how to teach ELA and implement um, reading into the classroom and I was able also to um, observe my mentor teacher and on how to implement reading groups in the classroom in order to improve my students reading skills. So what I did in order to implement all of these new skills and information that I was able to watch um, at these conferences and my vice principal, my mentor teacher and read on was that I rearranged my classroom in order to build cooperation with the group seating uh, I also began correct, giving corrective feedback, which was something that was touched upon by Fred Jones at his conference. I implemented reading groups based on uh, my observation of my mentor teacher. I also designated silent reading time in class and implemented the use of a reading log in order to give some responsibility to my class and to my students 
and in order to provide them with an opportunity to continue to read outside of the classroom. And I also started to meet independently with students to discuss their class progress. Here's an example of the seating in the classroom, uh, which is based on groups in order to heighten cooperation. You can see that all the students are working together um, on quizzes, which is an online uh, activity. Here we see our designated reading table for our reading groups with sentence frames posted on the, on the wall in order to help these EL students, in order to also improve these academic discourses within the class. Here you can see the reading log that was created in order to provide students with um, some time to read outside of the classroom and also the goals that were created not only for our class but our, as sixth grade as a whole. Here you see our virtual learning environment, which is Class Dojo and Google Classroom. Through Glass, Class Dojo, parents are also able to have some involvement and see their students' growth and work. And we're able to give points to students for being on task and reward them for all their hard work. On Google Classroom, they have access to assignments outside of the classroom at home um, so that there can be some involvement with parents as well. So in order to get the evidence of teacher growth, I gave a pre and subsequent reading assessment uh, online and my three focus students remained the same, Caesar, Sarai, and Genevieve, who is the advanced Sarai, part of the migrant program in an EL reclassified, and Caesar, uh, who is an EL student. Here you can see our pre-assessment in the fall. It shows the data on our students and their reading. Uh, we only had 9% of, of the class being proficient in reading. And as you can see, my focus students, Caesar was third to last in reading, Sarai was in the middle of the pack, and Genevieve was our best reader. This was an assessment that was given at the middle, in the middle of the year, winter of 2019. And as you can see now, even though we, haven't, we don't have any students who are proficient, all the students have grown. Sarai, Caesar, and Genevieve, who remains at the top, have grown. Caesar has gone from nearly being at the bottom of the class to almost being at the top of the class, which shows great improvement and uh, refinement of his reading skills. Here we can see some SRI data at the beginning of the year and the last assessment that we took. 0% um, of the class was proficient compared to now 4% of the class. Uh, the number of students in below basic has reduced by 8% to now 72%, and our numbers have grown in regards to students who are basic and who are proficient. So here we see that our goal was that 50% of students would improve in reading. Based on this data here, more than 50% of our class has improved. This is just a sample of the class but you can see that most of the class based on their first test and their last test has improved. Um, many show growth in their lexiles. Even though, even though um, some students grew a little bit, that still is improvement in their reading. So our goal was that students would improve their reading by using effective physical or virtual learning that's promoted by diversity and encouragement with productive interactions among peers. We were able to meet and surpass this goal. So at the beginning of the year, with our pre-assessment, only 9% of our students were proficient. Many students were below. Based on this information in this table and graph, we can see that all of, nearly 100% of the class grew and improved. Um, Though not many students grew by one band, we still improved, which was one of our goals, was 50% of our class would improve in reading. Here you can see that many of the students improved, we grew. And based on the first test and the last test, 64% of our students, based on this, were able to improve in reading and no, even though we didn't hit the 50% improvement by one band, there was still student growth. So based on the continuum of teaching and practice, um, I rated myself at the beginning as an emerging, but now I feel as though I'm applying in regards to CSTP 1.4. Um, the reason I feel this way is because 
I rated myself as an emerging at first because due to due to being at a new school and a new environment, I wasn't very sure of what to expect here, especially in regards to curriculum and materials. Um, but now that I have more knowledge and wisdom on how things are done, um, I'm able to apply all of this information that has become familiar with material in regards to the curriculum. And I feel a little more capable of being a, a much better teacher. I feel a lot more confident in being able to apply all of this knowledge gained for the next Good year. Good afternoon, everybody. I also, Please in regards to 2.2, emerging to applying, sure you um, I felt emerging by three due to and teaching all subjects last year at the middle awesome. school um, and coming into an, ele an elementary school where I had to teach awesome. all of the subjects. Um, I felt as though I didn't have a lot of experience, but now being here for a whole year, I feel as though I'm at applying now because I have a lot more experience in working with children all day in one class teaching all of the material or all of the, um, all of the, uh, such as math, English, science, social studies. So I, luckily I was able to grow in this. Um, and now I know how to implement reading groups as well. So my next steps this summer, I plan to continue growing as a teacher and as a person by um, furthering my knowledge of the core material. Um, I also spend, plan to spend more time with my family. Next year, I plan to continue my education by taking classes in order to uh, get my single subject credential. And five years from now, I envision myself reaching, uh, teaching math at either a middle school or high school um, setting. So thank you for your time and I appreciate everything. Thank you.